Hi, welcome to my channel EZML. In this video, we will be looking at the second stage of evaluating regression models, that is model accuracy. Here, we can see that the predicted variable is height and the predictor is chosen to be weight. We also have our testing data set here. Now, let us have a quick recap on training and testing data. Recall that the model will only be built on the training data set. Here, the model will analyze the patterns in the training data set by understanding the relationship between the predictor and the predicted variable, which in this case is weight and height respectively. The model will then go on to build a logic to predict height using weight as an input variable. As I mentioned in the previous videos, the model's accuracy will then be assessed on this testing data set. Here, in the testing data set, we have values that are completely unexposed to the whole model building process. I will now pass the values of weight in the testing data set through the model which was built on the training data set to predict values for height. Then we will get the predicted values of height. Now we can compare the predicted values of height with the actual values of height in the testing data to see how far off our predictions were to begin with. We can go on to calculate the difference between the actual and the predicted values to understand the error in prediction. There are many measures to check for prediction accuracy, but it is important to note that all these measures stem from this error term right here. That is the difference between the actual and the predicted value. Now we will go through each of the uh, error measures now. The first error measure is MAD, that is mean absolute deviation. It is calculated as follows. The formula is the sum of the absolute values of all the error terms divided by the number of observations in the testing data set. The second measure is RMSE, that is root mean square error. This measure is calculated as follows. I will explain this calculation in two steps. Step one, we first take the sum of the squared error terms and divide it by the number of observations in the testing data set. Step two, we then take the square root of the value obtained from step one. Now, the third and the last measure, which is MAPE, that is mean absolute percentage error. Note that since this error is in percentage, it becomes a relative measure. The calculation for this measure is as follows. It is the sum of the absolute values of the ratio of the error terms and the actual values divided by the number of observations in the testing data set. Now, please don't get worried or don't even bother to remember these formulas because R has many packages and functions that will help calculate all these measures. More than remembering the formula, I want all of you to understand these, how these measures are interpreted as such. So how do we interpret these measures? So I predicted height here. And note that height is in centimeters. Therefore, values such as MAD and RMSE will also be in centimeters as these error measures are on the same scale as the predicted variable. So when we say that the MAD is 25 here, it suggests that next time when I use this model to predict height, I may be off by roughly 25 centimeters. That is, the predicted value could be 25 centimeters above or 25 centimeters below the actual value. Now, let us move on to RMSE. Here we see that the RMSE is 28. Here it suggests that next time I use this model to predict height, I may be off by approximately 28 centimeters. So, the RMSE is similar to MAD, but it penalizes the model further. In other words, it is just a stricter measure. Now, let us move on to our last measure, 
that is MAPE. As I mentioned before, the MAPE is a relative measure. It expresses the error as a percentage. Therefore, when we say that the MAP is 18% here, it suggests that next time I predict height, I would be nearly off by about 18%. That is, I would be either 18% above or below the actual height value. Now, when it comes to all these measures, which is preferable? Well, I personally prefer MAP and I'll tell you why. Once I was working on a case where I had to predict sales for an, for an airline which was based out of Germany. I got an RMSE value of 150,000. Now this value seems very high, right? So this is because the predicted sales value was in millions of euros. So if I had predicted the sales to be 1 million euros and I'm off by about 150,000 euros, now this doesn't seem all that bad, right? So therefore, if the scale of the data and the context is unclear, then values such as RMSE and MAD may tend to throw some people off. For this same, same case where I had predicted sales for that German airline, I got an MAPE of 8%. This is actually very good because an error rate of 8% implies that the accuracy is about 92%, which is very acceptable. Conclusively, measures such as RMSE and MAD are scale dependent and can throw someone off. Hence, relative measures such as MAPE are preferred as they are not scale dependent and easier to comprehend. Now, having understood the importance of model accuracy, we have now come to the end of regression models. In the next video, we will deploy the regression model on the iris dataset in R. Thank you. Stay tuned.